So about three years ago, I did a video on my channel discussing the Eight Passengers family vlogging channel. Now, if any of you guys aren't familiar with Eight Passengers, Eight Passengers is a family vlogging channel comprised of the mom, Ruby, her husband, Kevin, and their five children from oldest to youngest, Sherry, Chad, Julie, Abby, Russell, and Eve. Now, the ringleader of this family vlogging channel was Ruby. The only reason we talked about the family vlogging channel three years ago was because Eight Passengers came under a lot of fire when a lot of their viewers started to notice that there was a lot of child abuse going on in the videos. I feel like every family vlogging channel is at least a little bit controversial, especially family vlogging channels that make their kids the sole purpose of their videos. I said this three years ago and I still stand by it today. I don't really think family vlogging channels are a good idea because your child has no business being on youtube.com. Like why am I looking through my recommended and your baby is still staring right back at me in the thumbnail. Even if you are like a proud parent and you wanna like share your child and stuff like that, you can share it with like close family members or friends, but strangers online, I feel like with this day and age and the easy access to anything you want online, it literally opens up the floor to a lot of very creepy predatorial people. And the messed up part about all of that is that I do feel like a lot of family vlogging channels know deep down that what they're doing is a little bit weird weird, yet they still continue to do it, which is even more weird. And back three years ago, when we were talking about eight passengers, this is exactly what I was calling them out for, for being weird, but also because there were clear signs of child abuse going on in the household, as the mother Ruby restricting food from her children on multiple occasions. I'm only gonna say it one more time, and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. She also sent her son to a wilderness camp for 10 weeks and took his bed away for seven months and forced him to sleep on a beanbag chair even though the family had moved from one house to another and they had a bedroom for him to sleep in they still forced him to sleep on the beanbag chair there was also another occasion where ruby had received a text message from her six-year-old daughter's teacher saying that her six-year-old didn't show up with food that day for lunch and she was starving and so she was asking ruby if she could come down to the school and bring something for her six-year-old to eat to which Ruby basically said no, that she wasn't gonna do that because it was her six-year-old's responsibility to make her own lunch. And if she didn't make her own lunch, then it was just simply the consequences of her actions. And there were also cases of, as I said, Ruby just being so weird, such as filming her 11-year-old's first time shaving her legs. Ruby also filmed her telling her six-year-old daughter that someone like really close to them had passed away and and she filmed her reaction to the death. Boggles my mind how much Ruby did and how much Ruby got away with, but that honestly was just service level. That was simply just what we could see on camera. Now, fast forward three years, current day, Ruby about a week ago, Ruby was recently just placed in prison and charged with six counts of child abuse. The things that were going on behind the scenes that was not filmed on camera is so heartbreaking and so unbelievable. And so if you didn't see my first video, don't feel like you have to go and watch that. I will be explaining mostly everything I explained in my first video, but now with deeper detail, because there are a lot of things that were said at the trial that I didn't know about before. So grab a little something, sit down, lock in for me while we revisit the eight passengers. But before we get into all that, I do want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Audible. Audible is your new best friend for all things audio entertainment, audiobooks, podcasts, and Audible originals. Audible offers a wide variety of options such as bestsellers, new releases, exclusive originals, and they even have tons of different genres. They have celebrity memoirs, mystery, thriller, motivation, business, and so, so many more that offer the perfect audio escapism. Lately where I live, it's been transitioning from winter to spring, and so so that means I'm able to finally get on my walks and Audible is the perfect thing for just popping in and enhancing the entire experience. Currently, I've been listening to a lot of mystery and thriller, especially The Coldest Case by James Patterson. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. And I've also heard that The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath is really, really good. And Audible 
actually has them. And that is another thing that I love about Audible is that I'm able to kind of explore and experience new genres that I never have before. And Audible is actually giving every single one of its newest members a free trial to Audible by clicking the link down below. Or you can also text Haley Elizabeth, all lowercase, to 500, 500 for a free trial at Audible. And Audible has not just helped out my walks, but it's also helped out my runs as well. It honestly makes my runs go by 10 times faster, which if any of you guys are runners, you know that is literally a dream come true. And so once again, if you guys want to try a free trial to Audible, make sure to click the link down below or go to the link on screen or text Haley Elizabeth, all lowercase, to 500, 500. And once again, thank you so, so much to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Now back to your video. I have been a masterful manipulator. I have manipulated using sex. I've manipulated using external rewards. I have wanted something and I'm going to get it no matter as for a little bit of backstory on the ringleader of eight passengers, Ruby Frank. Ruby Frank grew up in a very strict Mormon household and was the oldest of five children with her three sisters and one brother. Ruby would go on to say that her parents growing up were extremely abusive and they tended to neglect their children a lot, which led Ruby, who was the oldest sibling, to become a third parent to all of her younger siblings. And because she spent most of her time taking care of her siblings, she wasn't really able to go out and do the things that typical teens her age did. So after high school, she ended up going to Utah State and that is when she would meet her future husband, Kevin. Now she actually met Kevin when she was a freshman and Kevin was a senior. Birthday, bro. One night I was holding hands with Kevin under a blanket on one side <laughs> and there was another boy on the other side and I was holding his hand too. <laughs> Yeah, and it became super When we got married, I was 18. Um, I had just finished <laughs> Ruby was only 18 at the time, and after only two weeks of meeting Kevin, the two of them got married. And then whilst Ruby was still in college at 20 years old, that is when she would grow pregnant with her very first child, Sherry. Now, in a vlog before, Ruby had said that even though she was in college, she didn't really have plans of getting a job after college because her dream was to become a stay-at-home mother. And that's exactly what she did. After she graduated college, her and Kevin Kevin got a house and that is where they would raise their family in Utah. Two years after Ruby had Sherry, that is when she would have her second kid who was a son named Chad. And then after that, she would begin to have Julie, Abby, Russell, and Eve, all four kids about two years in between each other. And so that leads us to the birth of Eight Passengers. Eight Passengers actually started back in 2012 where they filmed their very first vlog. It was basically Ruby and her family going to the opening day of a Chick-fil-A in their town and she says the reason why they're there it's because they don't support gay rights. This is us waiting in line to eat a Chick-fil-A because we're supporting marriage between man and woman and Here's the end of the line. That being their very first video, you can kind of catch the vibe of how the rest of this channel is going to go. Now, the main reason why Ruby wanted to try out family vlogging was because her sister Ellie and her husband Jared actually had a channel themselves and it seemed pretty fun. And with Ruby being a stay at home mother, she did have the feeling as if she wanted to start doing something for herself. The A Passengers channel would actually gain a lot of popularity. And so due to all of Ruby's success on her YouTube channel, this is actually what led all of Ruby's sisters as well as her brother to also start YouTube channels of their own. And Ruby's parents also had a YouTube channel as well. Now in Ruby's video, she would constantly say how she was Mormon and her family went to a Mormon church and that was their religion. But there was actually an ex member of Ruby's Mormon church that said Ruby was kind of treated like a celebrity at the church. And even the people that worked at the church 
church would treat her as such. They would give her gifts. They would give her funding for her videos. They paid her to do Christmas campaigns and shout outs to the church. And it's also very slightly suspected that the church paid for her house in Utah. This abuse of her children wouldn't be as direct in the beginning as it later would become. At first, it just started off with Ruby telling very concerning stories about her and her kids, including this one story where Ruby goes on to say that her six-month-old named Russell, at the time of her filming the video, I believe Russell was like three years old, but she was recounting a story of when he was six months old. And she goes on to say that when Russell was six months old, supposedly, she had Russell laying on her lap and then she went to go get up and then in getting up, Russell fell off of her lap and onto the floor, but he didn't completely hit the floor because she was able to catch him before he actually fell. But after a week, he wasn't getting better. He kept on crying. And so she took him to the hospital. And that's when the doctors revealed that Russell had broken his femur. If you are a baby and you're just rolling off someone's lap, you are not going to break your femur. Your femur is the biggest bone in your body. Thus, it is the hardest to break in your body. Babies' bones are really hard to break to begin with because they're not fully developed yet. Their bones are still a little bit like rubber. And the fact that Russell, at six months old, broke his femur, I am so surprised that that baby wasn't crying in excruciating pain for an entire week before finally getting treatment. Now, because of this broken femur, it actually did have a lot of long-term effects on Russell because Russell wasn't even able to start crawling until he was one years old and didn't start walking until he was two years old. So this clearly had a lot of developmental issues in Russell and a lot of ER nurses and doctors came out about this after the fact and said that it is quite impossible Possible for a baby to break their femur if they are simply just rolling off of the couch. There clearly was something else besides that. And so once this story was told, that's when viewers started to realize that there was definitely something a lot more going on. But nonetheless, as the channel grew, all of this abuse just ran right under the radar. Your dad's taking you to the game, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I don't think I'm gonna go. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Can I do you want so bad? You know As they were on the rise for their YouTube channel, that is when Ruby started to realize that the more vulnerable content she posted of her kids online, the more views it would get, thus the more money she would make. Ruby would then start filming very, very intimate moments with her children. But as I said earlier, it was also around this time where she had filmed her 11-year-old shaving her legs in a bathtub. Now, I don't have to tell you the target audience that she was targeting, but it's quite clear exactly what she was doing. Now, this isn't even the first vulnerable moment she had filmed on camera. She had also filmed giving the period talk to her daughters. She has also filmed one of her daughters telling the story of how she had her first kiss. She also filmed her six-year-old's reaction to the death of someone that they knew. Just really, really invasive content. And obviously because of all of this content, it led the kids to get severely bullied at school. And once again, Ruby knew exactly what she was doing by posting these types of videos. And of course, she had the comments off on all of the videos because why would she have the comments on? Ruby would then grow more vulnerable on her channel. She would just then air out all of her business, all of her kids' business, as well as being more in depth about their discipline and rules of the house. It was made apparent at this point in the videos, her husband Kevin was really nowhere to be seen. And there were even people that questioned if Ruby was even a single mother because Kevin was never featured in videos. But in reality, Kevin worked full time as a professor at a college. And so he was consistently on work trips. But due to these consistent work trips, it left Ruby with the children all by herself. At one point, 
mean, people even questioned if Ruby even liked her kids to begin with, because when you look around the house, it literally looked like an Ikea showroom house. There were no pictures of the kids up on the wall. There was nothing that showed like that she was proud of her kids or that she even liked her kids. There was also a video of hers where, mind you, at this point, she was making a pretty penny from YouTube. And in one of the clips, she was disappointed in herself because she needed to up her food budget so that she'd be able to feed her kids more food. Point in the video where she was showing a haul of all of the food that she had gotten and none of the food was nutritious. There was one small bowl of fruit, there was no vegetables, and it was literally just all snack food. And then around this time is where we would finally see Ruby for the first time disciplining her kids. The situation was is that Eve and Russell were in her bathroom playing with nail polish and Eve accidentally got nail polish on the bathroom rug as well as the bathroom floor. Now to this, Ruby didn't get outraged. She didn't yell. She didn't get mad or it appeared to be not on camera. And she basically told Eve that because of this, she was not allowed to paint her nails for an entire month, even though it was Eve's favorite thing to do. Now, I don't think Eve did this on purpose. I don't think it was her intention to paint the floor. It was simply just an accident. And on top of that, she was going to make Eve do extra chores to help pay for her new bathroom rug. Mind you, Eve is six years old in this video. Looking and looking and looking for Eve, and I was like, why isn't Eve at the dinner table yet? She usually comes to dinner as soon as I call her. And then I go looking outside. We've been looking for 30 straight minutes. And then I found this. You only got a little gist of it on camera. All of the discipline takes place off camera. But one of the consequences is she will not be getting her nails painted for a solid month. And that's like her favorite thing. Came off the tile okay. But I think my rug is totaled. But aren't you glad it happened that way and not the other way around? Well, it came off the tile okay. Well, I know, but aren't you glad? I'm glad it came off the tile and... and so, you have to look at the bright side. <sighs> Thank you, Sherry. The tile is good, and it would have been a lot more expensive than to replace, at most, a $100 rug. It's not $100, yeah. Not that expensive. Okay. My kids have helped me finish raising myself. I swear, just because you turn 18 does not mean you're a full-grown, mature adult. There's nothing magic about the number 18. I think having kids has helped finish raise me because it makes me focus more on controlling myself than controlling them. And it is so hard to do. So now let's take it to the year of 2019, where the A Passengers was really at their peak. They were gaining subscribers rapidly, and at this point, they had already reached 300,000 subscribers. And even though she was filming all of this very vulnerable content, she never really saw a problem with it because it was so easy, where like if a person were to be like, hey, that's wrong what you're doing, that's really messed up, that's a really big breach of privacy for this kid. It was very easy for Ruby to just come back and be like, no, it's not like, that it's just because I'm raw and real and I'm trying to show what it's really like in a family. And so it's so easy for her to say that she's just being raw or real instead of just taking accountability and admitting that what she did was wrong and weird. And in 2019, that is when viewers slowly started to realize in the vlogs, because at this point, Ruby was daily vlogging. And so viewers started to realize that for the past two weeks, Chad hadn't been featured in the videos. And so Ruby and Kevin got on a video where they responded to this with the title, Where is Chad? And within this video, they were talking about how they had sent Chad to a wilderness camp called Anasazi located in Arizona. I'll be wondering what the heck we're talking about. Chad today has just entered the Anasazi Foundation Wilderness Therapy Program where he's going to spend the next eight to 10 weeks living in the- um, Anasazi Desert. Yeah, the desert mountains of Arizona. And he'll be with counselors and other youth that are trying to figure some things out. So you're probably wondering, 
what did Chad do? What did, okay, let's, we're not even going to entertain that stuff, but it's, it's an accumulation of things over years, well before we ever started YouTubing or well before we ever got into social media. And it's reached a point where um, Chad needs to develop some very basic maturity and skills that he's going to need as an adult. And uh, this is a, a chance for like a reset, like a start over, like a do over, like a fresh beginning. Yeah. So the idea is with wilderness therapy is if you can survive with these peers in the wilderness, with nothing more than the clothes on your back and a couple of field supplies, then there's nothing in this world that you can't tackle. Mind you, Chad is 12 years old. What adult skills do you expect a 12 year old boy to have? The only adult skill that a 12 year old boy should have is tying their shoes. Nothing else should be his problem because he's a child and should be taken care of. Usually people who take wilderness therapy seriously are people who have been substance abusers in the past, specifically with alcohol or drugs, or they had just gotten out of prison. Prison. And those are the type of people that were entering these sorts of wilderness therapies. Those adults should not be mingling with little kids that just did something minorly wrong, but their parents saw it as major and sent them to this wilderness camp for five to 10 weeks. So bottom line, it's going to be a long time before any of us sees Chad. We'll hear from him weekly in letters, the family will, and we'll write letters to him. But um, in the meantime, if everyone could um, keep your thoughts and prayers for him and our family, and we're excited to see how all of us, not just Chad, but all of us, yeah. are impacted and changed by this experience. And as you just saw Kevin say, yes, that is correct, Chad does not have contact with any of his family, and the only contact that he gets is emails being sent back and forth from the Anasazi team to Kevin and Ruby. As you can also pretty much put two and two together, it's very, very very easy for these counselors to lie to parents and lie about how their kid is doing. It's also very easy for these counselors to reread and revise all of the letters that these kids are putting out to their parents so their parents don't get worried and try to save them. And I don't doubt that this is exactly what Anasazi was doing to Chad because Ruby and Kevin had revealed to the audience that they were putting Chad in this wilderness camp. Well, when Chad was all said and done, there was actually a video posted where Ruby filmed her reunion with her son for the first time in 10 weeks. It's so heartbreaking to watch because when he goes in, he looks like a little boy. He talks like a little boy. But when he comes back, his voice literally drops an octave. Like he has an audibly deeper voice. And on top of that, he looks so drained and tired and sleep deprived and hungry. He looks like as if he's aged 10 years. And Chad, upon returning home, Ruby made Chad do a Q&A video for the channel because obviously Ruby got a lot of backlash for sending him to this wilderness camp. So she wanted to prove to anyone, actually, in fact, he did have a good time. So what you're saying is irrelevant. And she literally interviews Chad. Chad in this Q&A basically says that he loved the wilderness camp and he would definitely go back and he would also recommend it to other people who are interested but also Ruby is in front of the camera while he is answering these questions so why would he tell the truth just so he can be told that he's being bad again and then run the risk of being sent back and apparently none of that camp had even helped all of his behavioral issues as they were saying because the day that he came back from the camp he was playing with his little brother Russell he had picked up Russell and put him on the basket basketball rim to which Russell was just kind of hanging on to it and Chad left him there and it was just like this big joke. Wait, Chad. <laughs> oh, like the day I got home too. <laughs> Chad came home from Anasazi oh, and, I lifted him up on and the he rim. was and, <laughs> and left him there for <laughs> three minutes and he was just hanging on Do there. Do you think it's funny because and then I walk out if you think it's funny then you that was seven months ago maybe you need longer without a bedroom. It, it was not funny. 
that to me is like a little harmless because that just seems like brother brother sort of play. And then in late of 2019, that's when the Ruby would reveal that the family was going to be moving out of their house and into a bigger one. That's when Ruby reveals in the following video that Chad had played a prank, a harmless prank on his little brother, Russell, where he woke up Russell in the middle of the night and saying that their family was going to Disneyland and they weren't going to Disneyland. It was just, again, a funny prank, a joke, whatever, no big deal. Like no one's really getting hurt at the end of the day. But Ruby decided to punish Chad in the most extreme way possible and take away his bed for seven months, where Chad was then forced to sleep on a beanbag chair for seven months. And the reason why I'm mentioning this now is because, as I said in the beginning, they were in the process of moving houses. And although they had moved from this old house to their new house, Chad continued sleeping on the beanbag chair because Ruby felt as if he didn't learn his lesson yet. And so in the following year of 2020, that is when everything went down. I don't have to explain it. You were there as well. And unfortunately, because of everything, when things were slowly going into lockdown, this is unfortunately when the kids had to stay home from school. And so they no longer had the escape of going to sports or clubs or school. They were forced to sit in a house monitored 24-7 by Ruby and Kevin. There was even a very specific video where the oldest Sherry, I believe she was in volleyball. Now this clip I saw in real time, but I cannot find it for the life of me. But it was basically a video where Sherry was in volleyball and she was supposed to have volleyball practice that day, but it got canceled due to everything going on. And because of this, Sherry starts crying and Ruby gets confused as to why Sherry is crying and she starts saying, oh, you know, you can always see your teammates another time. It's no big deal. And now looking back on that and with knowing everything going on behind the scenes, I don't think she was crying because she didn't get to go to practice. Any other kid in that situation would be thrilled that they don't have to go to sports practice. They could just relax and take time to themselves. But the fact that Sherry was crying about it seemed as if this was her only escape from her mother and it had just been taken away from her. And in May of 2020, that is when Ruby would post a video titled, What We Haven't Told You. And it was in this video where everything would be revealed. And this video is actually what made a lot of people take a very close look at this family and what exactly was going on. All of the abuse was going under the radar because it sort of kept in their fandom and a lot of parents that had the same discipline techniques or views as Ruby, they were the ones watching these videos. So of course they weren't going to say anything about it. And also there was a target audience for these sorts of videos. And that's another reason why they were getting tons of views until this video was released. So at the top of the video, Ruby explains that her and Kevin recently just went to a retreat. And as part of their rules as they were away is that they banned all technology from the household. Now, when they got back from their retreat, she learned that two of her kids had broke the technology rule. And in this video, she just straight up says their names and shows them on camera as they're getting in trouble. Now, personally, I'm no snitch, so I'm not going to say the names of who actually broke this rule, but the way that Ruby goes about it. And while we were gone, we had the expectation that the kids would not be on the iPads. <clears throat> we said the kids um, would not be on the iPad. Come here, Eve. What that tells me, what that is, is feedback for me that tells me you are not responsible enough to manage yourself. I knew you were going to say that. Oh. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> And they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give yes. you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. Them. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at two in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> and he got up. 
and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in the suitcase and then he walked out the door and I'm like Russell and he's like what and he's all happy has his sunglasses on and I was like we're not going to Disneyland and he started crying and hitting me and then he went back to bed we moved um the bigger room in the basement was automatically his and I didn't have a room but we like put one on hold for me so a lot of you are like hey that's not there. <coughs> Russell got the big bedroom and Chai got the, the smaller bedroom Smallest. and Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom but what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't get anything he was sleeping on the floor in the family room and he just got the bedroom back and it's because he's shown up consistently without bullying the kids. It was also in this video that Ruby would start to acknowledge some of the comments about people asking why Chad was sleeping on a beanbag chair. And in this video, clearly like Chad's not laughing about it. Like he's very traumatized at what's happening to him. And the entire time Ruby is sitting there laughing and smiling as if Chad having to sleep on a beanbag chair, her own son suffering every night, probably having back problems, not getting enough sleep and she's just laughing about it. In this same video, Ruby would also go on to say that she had never taken away something from her kids and given it back to them in less than six months. Six months was like her minimum for taking things away. And as you can see from that video, although the kids are laughing and making fun of the situation, it's really, really sad because these punishments are so bizarre and they're abusive. And I feel like in the room, everyone knows that these punishments are a little extreme and they're a little bizarre, but they have no other way to cope with it because if they get mad or stick up for themselves, well, then that's just an argument. And so the only thing to do is to laugh. It's like they're not even surprised if she does something crazier or more wild because she has already done so much. Now, Chad would also go on to say in this video that because of his mother and her strict rules, this had led him to have no friends. He doesn't have time to go see friends or hang out with friends, nor does he feel safe or accepted into any friend groups that he enters into. At this point, her kids are so brainwashed by Ruby's mythologies, and when they grow up around that environment, they don't think that anything else is correct besides of what they're seeing on the daily basis. And so, of course, he or or I'm assuming any of the other kids don't feel like they're loved or accepted because they have never been shown love or exception. Even when Chad opens up to his mother about this issue, she sits there and laughs about it. Like basically no technology over the summer. And now I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're really they say some pretty people. messed up stuff. I don't, even, I don't even know where they live. <laughs> they're pretty far away. So? How do you feel about not having any friends? Sucks, but I don't feel safe or accepted in any friend group, so. That's really vulnerable of you to say that on camera because you don't have to film that. No, it's true though, and I've told my friends that as well, so. If your kid tells you that they have no friends and it's coming from like a really deep part of their heart, they're not laughing about it, they're not making fun of it, and your parent laughs in your face, like, and it was this clip in particular that actually started the popular hashtag, hashtag SaveChad2020, that started to circulate on TikTok and YouTube, and this was also the birth of all those compilations that you saw during the time, because people were now starting to look deeper into the eight passengers family into what was actually going on. And this is when a lot of small clips from their vlogs started to resurface and people starting to question them, such as, for example, there was this one clip where Russell and Chad were play fighting on the floor and Ruby says to Chad that if he doesn't stop play fighting with Russell, which is, mind you, a completely normal brother sibling thing to do, Ruby says, 
that if Chad doesn't stop, she's going to take his dinner away as punishment. There was also another video that started to resurface where Ruby had gotten a text from Eve's teacher saying that Eve is starving at school because she wasn't sent with a lunch that day. And so the teacher tells Ruby, do you mind like bringing something for her to eat? She says she's really hungry, but she has no food. And Ruby straight up tells the teacher, no, that she will not bring her food because it is Eve as a six-year-old girl, it is her responsibility to make her lunch every single morning. And if she doesn't make her lunch, well, then she's going to have to deal with the consequences of not eating because that is the consequences of your actions when you do not make lunch for yourself that day. And in the video, Ruby says that she hopes no one stepped in and she hopes that the teachers didn't give in and give her something or else she wouldn't learn her lesson. Obviously, Eve wasn't doing this with the purpose of trying to get back at her mother or make her mother go out of her way to bring her food. Eve just simply forgot to bring her lunch, as most of us do, even as adults. But yet, even for a harmless mistake, Ruby still felt the need to punish her kid. Text message uh, from Eve's teacher, and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today, and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children. I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch, and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning, and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. There was also another clip going around where Ruby had gotten so mad at Eve that Ruby had taken Eve's teddy bear and put it in front of her face and told Eve that if she doesn't stop doing what she's doing, she was going to take scissors and cut the head off of her teddy bear. There was also another clip that was resurfacing from one of their vlogs where Russell was being disciplined because he accidentally left his socks outside and as punishment for this, Ruby made him drop down and give her 10. Now I'm using bad language. That's how bad of a mood I'm in. You get your socks picked up and don't you leave your stuff out anymore. Oh. Right over there. Run and go pick them up and then give me 10 push-ups. Put them in your pocket so you can take them down to the hamper and drop and give me 10. One. Put your hands straight out. They're in. They're not supposed to be out. Shape your hands forward. There you go. One, two, down further, bring your butt down. As you can see from the video, clearly that was a mistake. He didn't even know he left his socks out there because as he's walking the walkway, he says to himself, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're, and then he realizes what he did and he's like, oh, I forgot my socks out here. Clearly it was a mistake. Mistakes shouldn't receive punishment. Mistakes should receive reflection and then a second chance at redemption. You don't punish your child for things that they don't mean to do because what that basically teaches them is that if they are not perfect 24 7 they will never be accepted or loved which is not the case and Russell at that time of the video was only seven years old and so when you put all of these clips back to back obviously it makes eight passengers look extremely abusive and it makes the family look like something else is going on below the surface is actually what inspired a a petition to be made at change.org where a watcher of eight passengers had made this petition called quote cps investigation into eight passengers and within this petition the person went into the description to explain who eight passengers was as well to include different clips from the videos that showed clear signs of child abuse and so now ruby was really starting to feel the heat of everything because this was no longer just a couple of hate comments this was now resurfacing in a bigger way. And so what does Ruby do other than go on 
Instagram stories. Obviously, she's going to the platform with the least amount of viewers so that this information doesn't go to the ears of people that like her and then that deters their perception of her. And what do you know, Ruby surprisingly doesn't take any responsibility for anything that she did. And then she makes a follow-up set of stories, but now with Kevin, where Kevin speaks out and he says that everyone who's saying that the wilderness camp was wrong or that making him sleep on a beanbag chair was wrong, that is actually correct because they have talked to therapists and professionals and these therapies and all of these things that they were doing were actually recommended by these people. So they have to be right. And Ruby also goes on to confirm this and say that, oh, well, when we put Chad in the wilderness program, what do you think the first thing they took away was? His bed. And that's because kids sleep better when they're not on a bed. I've been consulting with uh, mental health and emotional health professionals for years. And the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling abusive are actually things that mental health professionals have uh, counseled us to do. We got accused of child abuse when we sent Chad to Anasazi. Guess what? The first thing that they did was take a bed away. They, they don't have beds. Were you talking to a professional that you found in an alley on a random Tuesday? Like what kind of professional with a degree, not even a degree, with common sense would tell you that making your child sleep on a beanbag chair for seven months is just not gonna be psychologically damaging. And then after like seven months of not having a bed, they're just gonna be like happy and healthy and everything's gonna be fine. No one is going to tell you that because that is common sense. <laughs> Ruby has the gall to say that if you are triggered by how she parents her kids, then maybe you should be asking yourself, why are you projecting on to this innocent mother who is treating her kids in ways that are very beneficial to her family? Why why would she listen to anyone else when things are clearly going so well for her? And so uh, once again, she doesn't take any responsibility. She doesn't take any blame. And if anything, she blames other people and say, well, it's working so well for me. So it's clearly a you issue. People are really triggered. And so if you are triggered and you're upset because of something Kevin and I have done with our children, that is actually working really well for us then I would invite you to look at it and ask yourself what what is it that I'm projecting onto this situation because so we've learned through experience that when people get triggered or get upset by something it usually is because that something mean something about them. It wasn't working. It was never working. It was working for her because it helped her gain more control of her kids. But as for her kids, it was not helping anyone. Now, what do you know? Their follow-up video to all of this controversy was a video titled Destroying My Sibling's Room. And in this video, they would show the moving in process of Chad finally receiving his own room. Now, if nobody were to to call out anything that was said in that video. I don't think Ruby would have given Chad a room for months, but it was due to all of this backlash and these specific clips that she needed to show people because now she has CPS possibly looking into her. She needs to show proof that she doesn't abuse her kids and see, he does have a room. Girl, he should have had the room when you moved in. But although due to Ruby's desperate attempts to make it look like every everything was fine, she still received a visit from Child Protective Services. According to the CPS report, it said that everything was fine and the home environment looked okay and it didn't look abusive. I think is absolutely insane because an environment doesn't have to look abusive to be abusive. Sometimes the most abusive environments are the environments that look like everything is completely fine. Ruby became 
became infuriated and she started to send out ceased and assist letters and as well as copywriting all videos that talked about her family for defamination. And my video was actually one of those videos. They even started to send out these letters to a couple of YouTubers as well as the company Business Insider for an article that they had done with them. Now you heard me correctly. Ruby had sent out these seize and assist letters to a company for the article that she did with them. In this article, the couple would speak out about why they had Chad in a beanbag chair and why that was ethical. And Ruby goes on to say in this article that it actually wasn't that bad. And it was actually Chad's choice to do the beanbag because she gave him three options, either a guest pullout bed, an inflatable mattress, and a beanbag chair. And Chad chose the beanbag chair. I'm just going to say it right now. I don't believe that. I don't believe that because what kid would choose a beanbag chair over an actual bed and in like an actual room like it was a guest bed like he had his own room basically and they also address the whole controversy of Ruby deciding not to feed her daughter Eve when the school had contacted Ruby saying that Eve never came with lunch now Ruby's explanation for this was that it wasn't because she was trying to starve Eve or starve Eve by teaching her a lesson it was because it was a 45 minute drive round trip to where she she was at and she couldn't be bothered to make the trip. And she also goes on to say that that entire video, the clips that people were taking were just out of context. But how can this be out of context? And hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Ruby and Kevin at the end of the article go on to say that they are proud of themselves as parents and not only as parents but they are also proud of all of their children and how far they have come and they also go on to say that despite all of the haters and what the haters want their family is actually thriving and because of all of this controversy it didn't rip them apart as others had hoped it actually brought them together and that their bond is strong stronger than it's ever been because of the hate that they're receiving. But it was clearly obvious that this family was anything but happy. Between the months of September and June of 2022, the channel had lost over 200,000 subscribers and was at a rapid decline. And that was mostly because due to all of the backlash online that Ruby was getting from filming her kids constantly, Ruby decided to kind of switch her content. And so she wasn't filming her more vulnerable content, but now she kind of took a different approach. And now she was doing more mom content, such as reorganizing videos or cooking videos and really didn't feature the kids kids as much anymore. But because of this change in content, that means her target audience no longer were interested in her videos, thus the rapid decline of her views as well. But although the family seemed to be trying to go in a very non-problematic route, Ruby behind the scenes would continue to be problematic when she reveals one day that she is in the process of writing a book. And shortly after she revealed that she was writing a book, that is when Ruby would speak out in an article about how her her family has suffered ever since they had been canceled. She says, quote, sponsorships were 90% of the business and that has gone away. I never cease to be amazed at how intense and ferocious these individuals in cancel mobs are. They will watch your videos for two hours straight and take note of every ad that pops up and reach out to every one of those advertisers and threaten them with boycotts. Then came the unkindest of them all, a change.com petition demanding that Utah's Division of Child and Family Services investigate the Frankies started serving circulating in May of 2020. And in this article, she talks about the CPS visit and basically said that the ferocious mobs were just trying to figure out something to hate on her for. And that CPS realized that she was running a very perfectly normal and happy, healthy home. So they let her go, but the anger did not leave her afterwards. And so through that article, you can tell that Ruby is blaming other people, blaming other people that this is the reason she doesn't get 
sponsorships that this is the reason CPS came to her house, excluding the fact that Ruby chose to not give Chad a bed. She chose to not give Eve food. She chose to film, edit, and post vulnerable moments of all of her children. And throughout that entire time, no one was telling her to do that. She posted that content out of her own free will, yet she's blaming other people for the backlash that her content received. Now for a second, taking a step back and realizing that maybe she is the problem because everyone else sees the problem but her. Now around this time, each of their videos was getting around 500,000 views, which is a lot of views. And then when Ruby started going more towards the mom content, she started only getting around 98,000 views per video, which is absolutely terrifying because that right there tells you how many people stayed specifically for the children. And then that's when Ruby would go on to post their final video titled Baptism, which it basically just featured Kevin getting baptized for the first time before the channel was abandoned for the next year. Now, although the channel was abandoned and they weren't doing anything on YouTube, didn't mean they weren't doing anything behind the scenes. Jody Hildebrandt was a self-proclaimed mental fitness trainer, and she says that she helps people better their lives through psychotherapy. In her About Me page on her website, she goes on to say that she actually used to work as a psychotherapist at a real clinic, but she left the medical world because her patients weren't healing. But what she means to say is, I was on probation for 18 months because I wasn't just working in psychotherapy, I was also a porn therapist. And I would actively go around and talk about my patients and their personal struggles to not only fellow counselors, but also people at my church and people at a random university. And so because of me breaching patient confidentiality so many times, I was fired from my job, I had my license taken away from me and I also risked going to jail but ended up not going to jail and was just put on house arrest for 18 months. But if you scratch all that, it was because my patients weren't healing. Now, I'm not even gonna go into depth about her whole website because it is so vague. Like literally Jody will say things like, have you ever felt depressed? Have you ever felt sad? Have you ever felt anxiety? Well, maybe I can help with that. Obviously, everyone has felt sad. Everyone has felt anxiety. That's literally a normal human response to things. She was just trying so desperately to connect to absolutely anyone she could. Now, Jody actually had a company called Connections, and through Connections is how she did these programs. Programs included self-help and self-transformation, and she also administered therapy, therapy for one-on-one, -on -one, but also marriage counseling as well, and that's how how Ruby found Jody. Ruby and Jody met back in 2016 when Ruby was trying to find a counselor for her son, and that's when she found Jody. And then she also found out that she did marriage counseling. So not only was Jody counseling her son, she was also counseling Ruby and Kevin's marriage. And then shortly after meeting Jody, that is when Kevin and Ruby would make a turn to their content and they would start posting more parenting advice, with their first parenting advice video being titled, quote, there are a lot of misconceptions you may have about what makes you a good parent. Here are a few. In this video, surprisingly, Kevin takes the stage most of the time. He basically goes on to say that as a parent, you may feel like you have a lot of responsibility over your child, that you are responsible, that you are responsible for them being successful, that you are responsible for them being happy and all these different things. But in reality, you as a parent are not responsible for that. If you just pretend like those responsibilities don't exist they don't exist. After this, Ruby and Kevin would become kind of like the face of the Connections company. They were featured on couples counseling panels where they talked about their relationship. But after a while, that's when people started to notice Kevin was slowly getting out of the picture and it was now all Ruby. And what really shocked people the most is when Ruby decided to rename the eight passengers Instagram account to Moms of Truth, an account slash podcast that that was run by Ruby and Jody, and that's basically what this account was made into. Ruby would then start to make Instagram reels and TikToks where she would basically just echo whatever Jody said. Love, truth creates, truth gives inspiration, distortion deceives, distortion destroys, distortion attacks, 
Distortion looks for proof. Distortion points the finger. Distortion blames. As you can probably tell, what is she talking about? Literally, what is she saying? She's making no sense. And that's because Ruby is simply just using random buzzwords as a way to get her point across to make herself sound like she knows what she's talking about. But if you do watch these TikToks and these Instagram reels, the language that she's using is very, very similar to the language that you would find in a cult-like setting. If your kid came to you on fire, would you say, I'm so so glad you trusted me to tell me you're on fire but if i put out the fire that's gonna really hurt and you're gonna end up with scabs anyway so i'm just gonna love you where you are right now no you you throw them on the ground and you start rolling them you get a blanket and you start hitting the flames and they're gonna say you're hurting me you're you're beating me you're controlling it's like no dear hold still I'm getting the fire out. This was all happening in September of 2022. And during this rebrand of the eight passengers, it was made known that in videos, Kevin was nowhere to be seen. And so it was speculated during this time that they had gotten a divorce. And on top of that, Sherry, the oldest daughter, would go to her Instagram to talk about her situation a little bit and clear up some things by saying, quote, I know there are many rumors circulating online about my family. While it is true, I am not in contact with my immediate family and don't support the extreme beliefs of connections, please remember that this is my real family. Despite good intentions, speculating rumors and gossip doesn't help us. I'd like to ask for privacy for me and my family as we work through this very difficult situation. But Ruby, surprisingly, did not respond to anything anyone was telling her online. And in fact, she became a full-time employee at the Connections company with her description on the site saying, quote, Ruby Frank is a certified mental fitness trainer with connections. She is a wife and a mother of six wonderful children. She provides content on connections, social media platforms, and podcasts that focus on empowering parents and children to live in truth. Which that part right there, teaching kids to live in truth, what does that mean? And also, I think it's quite ironic that she is claiming to be a mother of six when literally none of her kids like her. Now, as I said, Ruby and Jody had started a podcast called Moms of Truth. So there was actually an episode of Moms of Truth where Ruby is opening up about how she had left YouTube and how that decision was so hard for her. Full time. You wonder where I've been on my vlogs. You wonder why I left YouTube it's to save my kids. No amount of money. I, and I'm telling you, I was making millions. And I left it because my kids were being hurt. With entitlement, they were being hurt. With people's advice. And they didn't have a mother up the front saying, I don't care what the world's opinion is. This is the truth and this is where I stand. And fortunately, I had a chance. I had them in my home long enough to do it. And I'm not going to lose them. They're seeing truth, they're accepting truth, they're loving truth. And so this is my passion, is to invite you to stand in truth and put your opinions to the side for a minute. Because your kids are the target of distortion. Now let's just remind each other, this woman profited off of abusing her kids online. She made millions of dollars abusing her kids online for a living. That's all she did. Filming her children in vulnerable moments is what made her millions, yet she's crying about it because she walked away because it was hurting her children. She never cared about what her children wanted because if she would have cared, she would have listened. And then in March of 2023, as I said, Ruby's siblings also had YouTube channels of her own. And so then that's when Ruby's sibling, Bonnie, would post a video titled, Happy 20th Birthday Sherry, to which Sherry seemed to be celebrating her 20th birthday, but none of her siblings were present, neither were either of her parents. And all while Ruby is still online, proving herself to be a perfect parent, and everybody should listen to her parenting advice because this is what works for her. On August 30th, 2023, police were called to a Utah home in Ivins, Utah, after the caller had said that a young 12-year-old boy had come to their home claiming that he wanted food and water. This 12 year old boy was duct taped at the wrists and the legs and seemed extremely dehydrated and starved. 
had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he's a uh, said he had just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry, and he's thirsty. Okay. Is, he, is your door locked? No, I'm sitting outside with him on the, on the front patio. Okay, cool. And he asked us to call the police. The police show up to the scene and take the young boy to the hospital because his injuries were so severe while they went to the house down the road to which the little boy had said that his other siblings were. But when the police would report to the home down the street, that is when they would find three young girls in similar condition to the young boy. Now, as you can probably assume, these four young children were Ruby's four youngest children. At this point, Sherry and Chad had moved away from the house. And the home that these four young children were found found in were not the home that they shared with Ruby, but it was actually Jody's house. When the police went to the home, they actually found two adults already there, a woman by the name of Pam and her husband. Now, Jody's home was actually four hours away from Ruby's home, and so it was very concerning as to why the kids were there in the first place, but nonetheless, Child Protective Services showed up to the home and took all four kids away. Shortly after this would follow the official arrest of Ruby Frank and Jody. Following the arrest, Sherry would post to Instagram a picture of Child Protective Services outside of her house with Ruby inside, saying, quote, finally. And then her next post said, quote, Hi all, today's been a big day. Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell police and CPS for years about this and so glad they finally decided to step up. The kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Please keep them in your prayers and also respect their privacy. In early September, Sherry's old neighbors would actually start to contact Sherry saying that they believe Ruby had left all the young children in the house for three to four days at a time completely home alone. They also noted that Ruby started to do very odd things such as tape paper over the windows so no light could be let in, as well as forcing her kids to work in the excruciating heat for hours on end with seemingly no food or water. And so due to this, Sherry called the police. By their oldest daughter, 20-year-old Sherry Frankie, back in September 2022. Hi, um, my name is Sherry Frankie. My four younger siblings are living in Springville and my neighbors have been telling me that they have been left home alone for about four or five days. After the arrest, Ruby's sister, Julie and Bonnie, came out about the entire situation, and they said that they actually had a pretty close relationship with Ruby. That was until Jody came into the picture. Once Jody started to spread her very hateful and disgusting beliefs and how she viewed connections and everything about connections, that is when Ruby started to spread those same morals as well, to which Julie and Bonnie did not like. And Bonnie and Julie even told told Ruby that if she wants to come over to any more family functions, she is not allowed to talk about connections because they do not align with any of those beliefs and they don't even want to hear about it. A neighbor would later speak to the Rolling Stone in an article where they said, quote, in early 2022, it started getting weird. People were concerned because Ruby completely stopped her YouTube stuff and then it kind of turned dark. She taped up paper all over her windows. She would disappear for weeks at a time and there's all these little kids just left in that house. One thing we noticed and we told the police the same thing. Six to eight weeks ago when it was really hot, I was outside in the late morning afternoon pulling weeds and over at Jody's home, several kids were also outside of her home pulling weeds. Over the course of the day, the temperature was well over 100 degrees and I gave up after a while because it was so hot, but I noticed that the kids stayed out there. And following all of this, that is when Ruby and Jody were both charged with six counts of child abuse. With one one of the kids even saying that the therapist is the one that tied them up and would actually rub honey and cayenne pepper into their wounds as punishment. And shortly after the arrest, that is when they had her very first hearing to which Kevin was present. Now to all of this, Ruby clearly has not learned her lesson because Ruby being the dark and twisted person she is, she then gets mad at her son that ran away from the home home to try to get help. She grows so mad at him because it's his fault that she is in jail and she lies to the court and her attorney says, quote, Ruby at times broke down as she made shocking claims that one of her minor children sexually abused their sibling and 
did several other family members. Ruby said that in May, her child confessed to sex abusing 20 people, including cousins and neighbors, with the judge saying, quote, she's putting the blame onto her two kids to validate what she did to her children. At this point, I think she'll say anything to save herself. And then after her hearing came her trial, and that is when the real truth of everything would finally come out. Ruby had met Jody back in 2019 through counseling, as I said before, but what we didn't know is that Jody in 2022 actually moved into the family home that Ruby shared with her husband and kids. While Jody was there, she was able to gain all control over Ruby and even brainwashed and manipulated Ruby into kicking Kevin out of the house because his attitude was infesting the household, aka he probably wasn't agreeing with all of the things she was saying at Connections. And so she just kicked him out of the house in order to prevent Ruby being influenced by him. When Kevin was kicked out of the house, he was then moved into a house up the street where he was constantly being monitored by members at Connection. On October 5th of 2023, Kevin would go on to say that he was absolutely shocked when Ruby was arrested and he had no clue of the extent of the abuse that was going on at the household and that over the past year, he had only spoken to Ruby a couple of times and hadn't spoken to any of his kids at all. And the only updates that he got was from Ruby saying that his kids were doing amazing without him and that his kids love that he's not around and they're thriving and they're the happiest they've ever been. And at the time, Chad was actually still living in the household until Kevin had convinced Chad to move out of the household with a fellow family member coming out to a news article saying, quote, their son Chad joined him, but Jody was also counseling Kevin, ordered them to separate, claiming they were enabling each other. So basically at first, Chad had moved in with his dad, Kevin, but then per Jody's request, she had Chad and Kevin separated because she thought that their views were infesting one each other's. And I don't want you guys hearing this and thinking that Kevin is a great person. He definitely is the lesser of two evils, but he's not the great option. Kevin was still there when the abuse before YouTube was going on and the abuse before Jody was happening. And also during this time, Kevin even tried to have the oldest daughter, Sherry, arrested for burglary because Sherry went to Kevin's house and took back some of her personal belongings. Insert police body cam footage. And then on December 18th of 2023, that is when Kevin would file for divorce against Ruby. In his divorce documents, he had said that his wife had brainwashed him and his kids. He then says that his wife had placed all of these new rules and punishments, thinking that these things were good for them when in reality they weren't. And then when he tried to stick up for himself, he was kicked out of the house where he was constantly being monitored by people at Connections, furthermore being brainwashed. And so basically in the entire divorce, document, he was blaming Jody for everything, saying that Jody was the reason that he was getting a divorce. She was the reason that everything went bad. But once again, Jody wasn't there when they took Chad's bed away. And Jody also wasn't there when they sent him to the wilderness camp, also wasn't there when they refused to feed their kids. Jody wasn't there for a lot of the abuse that we saw going on for years and years. Kevin was there the entire time. And not only was he there, he greenlighted everything. So was Jody really to blame for all of this? But in December of 2023, before Ruby's trial came the custody battle. And it was really hard to say who was going to get the kids if Ruby were to be arrested and in prison because they couldn't hand the kids over to Kevin. Clearly Kevin is brainwashed and he's mentally ill. He's not in the fit state of mind to be having children again. And also they were trying to think that maybe another relative, but if you remember, all of Ruby's siblings also did family vlogging. And even while Sherry was at her lowest, I'm assuming, Bonnie filmed Sherry and put her name in the title knowing it would get a lot of views because her family was under so much fire at that point. Knew that she was traumatized by being in front of a camera 24 seven and they still went forward and filmed her and posted it online. And it was also 
also made known that maybe Bonnie was probably doing all of this for attention because Bonnie also posted another video to which it's deleted now, but it was basically a video where she went into very deep and unnecessary detail about her and Ruby's childhood. And then when she realized that had nothing to do with the case and all it was simply doing was taking away attention from the children, she deleted it. But nonetheless, she had thought it was a good idea at some point because she filmed it, edited it, and posted it. Now, there are textbooks on how to create children, obviously, but what there is no textbook on is how to raise that child. Some children will come out quiet while others are loud, others are angry while others aren't, and how the kid navigates that is exactly how the parent navigates them. Ruby, throughout her entire trial and even way before her trial, blamed her kids for everything. She said that it was all their fault and that they were just not responding to her punishments. And then when they weren't responding to her punishments in a way that fit her satisfaction, she upped the antics until she received that satisfaction. It seemed like since Ruby grew up in an environment where she had to be a third parent and she didn't get to live her life or go out and have opportunities, it kind of put anger and resentment into her when she saw her kids having fun because when she was their age, she couldn't have fun. And so she, in her mind, needed them to suffer to some sort of an extent so that she felt better about herself. In 2020, that is also around the time where Ruby would then hire Jody to be her mental fitness coach and pay her weekly for it. Now, I'm assuming why Ruby was paying Jody to be her mental fitness coach and her mentor because Jody believed in a lot of the things that Ruby believed in, except 10 times more extreme, if that was even possible. And the only reason why I believe Ruby gravitated mostly towards Jody was because Ruby so desperately wanted someone to validate what she was doing. Ruby would do anything but take accountability and blame herself for any of the things that went wrong in her life. And so what she was craving was someone to tell her that what she was doing was indeed right and Jody was that person. So that led her to really put herself into Jody and listen to everything that she has to say. And then in the year of 2022, shortly after Jody moved in, that's when everything went downhill. That is when Sherry left and then shortly after Kevin left and then shortly after Chad left, leaving just the four children. And it was also made known at her trial that all the times that Ruby had said that she spoke to professionals and this is what they said was correct, turns out Ruby never spoke to professionals. She never spoke to doctors because as we know, Ruby never takes advice from anyone. And so if therapists and doctors were giving her suggestions, I highly doubt she was accepting any of it. And it was during the year of 2022 to 2023 where the abuse would just get 10 times darker and it was all revealed at the trial. It was revealed that during this time, we're not really sure why, but Ruby had moved all of her children from her home into Jody's home, which was about four hours away in Ivan's, Utah. A statement from the trial said, quote, Ruby also admitted to kicking her son while wearing boots, holding his head underwater, and smothering his mouth and nose with her hands, according to the plea agreement. He was also told that everything that was being done to him were acts of love. If your kid came to you on fire, would you say, I'm so glad you trusted me to tell me you're on fire, that if I put out the fire, that's gonna really hurt and you're gonna end up with scabs anyway, so I'm just gonna love you where you are right now. No, you, you, throw them on the ground and you start rolling them. You get a blanket and you start hitting the flames and they're gonna say, you're hurting me, you're, you're beating me, you're controlling. It's like, no dear, hold still, I'm getting the fire out. Ruby acknowledged similarly abusing her nine-year-old daughter by forcing her to work outside, run on dirt roads barefoot and go without food and water. Did horrible acts of child abuse. From May to August in 2023, Ms. Frankie and her business partner held her two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house where the children and the defendants were staying. The children were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs, and wall sits or sitting against a wall without a chair or a stool. 
for hours at a time. They were also forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, at times without shoes or socks. They were forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days at a time. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived in that situation. Both Jody and Ruby were forcing Ruby's four children in extreme work environments. They were forcing them to work outside in the heat for endless hours without any food or water. And when they were trying to drink or eat in secret, that is when Ruby would shove their heads under water while wearing steel toe boots and kicking them in the head. Ruby would also begin tying her children at the wrists and the ankles and duct taping them in Jody's basement to make sure that they didn't go anywhere. On top of that, she also would often handcuff these four children. Mind you, all four of these children are under the age of 12 years old. She would handcuff all of these children to poles or anything she could get a hold of to make sure that her kids weren't going to run away. Ruby would say herself at the trial that the reason she kept her four kids shackled and abused was because she she believed they were, quote, evil and possessed. Even after all of this, even after Ruby had confessed to the things that she had done, she still blamed Jody for everything. Didn't take any accountability, didn't say it was her fault, but she said that it was Jody's fault that she had turned into the monster that she had become. Ruby's attorneys would say at the trial, quote, Mrs. Hildebrandt, AKA Jody, systematically isolated Ruby from her extended family, older children, and her husband, Kevin. This prolonged isolation resulted in Miss Frankie being subjected to a disordered sense of morality shaped by Mrs. Hildebrandt's influence. Our only comment is that we trust the judge to sentence them both to one to 15 years for each of the four counts to run consecutively and then let Utah State Board of Pardons decide if that should be shortened or other conditions imposed. And on February 20th, 2024, the long awaited day, Ruby's sentencing. Ruby at first had accepted a plea deal because a part of the plea deal was that she had to testify against Jody. But as soon as Ruby found out that she was gonna have a trial, what do you know? She pled guilty. So none of her kids got to tell their story. No one knows the full story of what happened. No one knows of all the abuse that happened because Ruby pled guilty and accepted a plea agreement. Now I'm assuming why she did this was because she knew that if her kids or any other person were to come to trial, they would probably say something about her that nobody knew about, thus getting her charged for more than what she already is. And because of her pleading guilty to the four out of six counts, of child abuse because the two other ones had been dropped per her plea agreement. She was then sentenced to four consecutive years, one to 15 year terms. And so basically what that means is that Ruby was charged with four counts of child abuse. And so instead of serving time for all four of them at once, she will be serving time for them one after the other. So say one charge is like two years, she will take two years to serve that charge. And then the next Next year, like say the second charge is like eight years, she will then serve eight more years to make up for that charge. And that's how her sentencing will go. Now, the amount of time she will get for each charge is still unknown, but the maximum amount she could get is 30 years. And Ruby, this woman never quits. That is one thing about this woman. She never, ever quits. Because after her sentencing, she has the opportunity to make a statement. And in this statement, Ruby says that she expresses remorse and she is sorry to her husband and her kids. And she's sorry to everyone that she has failed. And she even takes a moment to thank people. She thanks the police that rescued her children, the medical professionals that saved her children, and she even thanks the police that arrested her because she says that as soon as the cuffs were slapped on her, all of a sudden, she had this like wake up moment. And then all of a sudden she's like, whoa, maybe what I was doing was kind of bad. And now all of a sudden she has remorse for what she did. And if it wasn't for the police arresting her, she would have never realized that. I'd like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. 
For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before you today ready to take accountability. Jody was employed as my son's counselor in 2019, and in 2020 I paid her to be my mentor. It is important to me to demonstrate my remorse and regret without blame. I take full accountability for my choices, and it is my preference that I serve a prison sentence. Seven. My husband of more than 23 years, you are the love of my life. I'm so sorry to leave to you to finish what we both started together. The ending of our marriage is a tragedy. And you are wrapped around my heart in a knot I'll never be able to undo. To my babies, over the past four years, I was in a deep undercurrent that led us to danger. I was in a world into darkness knowingly. I was so disoriented that I believed dark was light and light was wrong. I would do anything in this world for you. My willingness to sacrifice all for you was masterfully manipulated into something very ugly. I took from you all that was soft and safe and good. I took from you your mother. How terrifying this must have been for you. Oh, I was so crying. You are hurting your tender souls. You are you're so precious to me. I'm sorry. It's kind of like Ruby never cared about the well-being of her kids until she got caught. She is sorry because she got caught. Let us not forget the day after she was arrested at her hearing, she had blamed her young son for actually assaulting multiple people because she was angry at him for going to the police and escaping. And then after thanking all of these people, she turns attention on to Kevin. And she says that she's so sorry to Kevin for everything that she's put him through. And she's so sorry to now leave him with the creation that they had started, meaning her kids. Also kind of bold for her to assume that Kevin is even gonna be within 10 feet of these kids after this. Surprisingly, Ruby doesn't cry until she starts talking about her husband, Kevin, and that is when she finally starts crying. And it was said, but not confirmed, that Kevin was in the courtroom crying when all of this was being said. And so then after Ruby's sentencing came about Jody's sentencing, which she got the same exact sentencing, she was given four counts of child abuse and was going to be serving all of those charges consecutively. So her max is also 30 years. And I know what you may or may not be thinking. Jody got sentenced, Ruby got sentenced, where's Kevin's sentencing? What is he getting sentenced for? Well, Kevin was not getting sentenced for anything. With his attorney making a statement saying, quote, the treatment these children received at the hands of those who the children had the right to trust was horrific and inhumane. Both physically and psychologically, Kevin remains focused on the rehabilitation of these sweet and vulnerable children so that they might return to a normal life as soon as possible. And so as for today, she was sentenced only about two weeks ago. Jody and Ruby 
are currently still in prison. Now, since the sentencing was so recent, we don't know what exactly is happening or will happen to the kids. There are speculations online that Sherry is currently trying to obtain custody of all four minor children. Now, I'm not sure what the process of that is currently, and it's very difficult who to say of like who should be in custody of the children because I know that everybody wants Sherry to win the custody battle. Everybody wants Sherry to be a mother to these children. I mean, Sherry has been a mother to these children, arguably more than a mother than her own mother to these children all of her life. So of course she would be the perfect mother for these kids, but you also need to factor in Sherry was also a victim of Ruby and Kevin. Sherry herself is going through so much healing and trauma and processing of everything that has been going on between her and her siblings. Sherry herself has so much work to do and I'm unsure if a court will see that as fit to be a parent. Now, I'm not saying Sherry's never going to be their parent. I hope that Sherry becomes a parent to these kids, but I feel like as of right now, a lot of courts will deem her unfit to be a parent because of her past and such little time to process everything. Everything. We clearly know that Sherry is not going to repeat the cycle of what her mother did to these children, but that is not a risk that a court is going to take. They need to see actual documents, actual evidence of her improvement, how she is fit to be a mother, and how she has a plan for herself. That is intense, and that is going to probably take years to come to terms with and fully heal from, and I don't know if a court is going to see them as psychologically fit to be parents for these kids. But once again, since both Jody and Ruby had pled guilty, none of the full story and full facts and details of what really happened had ever been said. And yeah, that is the end of today's video. And I hope and pray that one day these kids come to a point of peace and acceptance. And I would also love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on the case in the comments below. Usually at the end of my videos, I tell like my opinions about the case, but I feel like I've been doing that pretty much throughout. Um, I got pretty heated over this case, obviously. It's a very frustrating case, especially when they're, oh my God, I'm not even going to get into it all over again. There were so many points where things could have been taken care of. There were so many times when Sherry called CPS that CPS could have done something. There's so many times where CPS could have easily looked at at the footage on eight passengers and saw that there was clear abuse going on. Making your child sleep on a beanbag chair for seven months is not normal. That is psychologically damaging. And the fact that this went under the radar for so many years is terrifying. And I'm so, so happy that justice is served. And I'm so, so happy that Ruby is currently, as we speak, in prison. And so is Jody. That is the end of today's video. Again, I would love to hear your guys' comments and opinions in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on any of my socials, like my Instagram or Pinterest, that will be linked down below. I really love doing these types of deep dive videos. Um, don't worry, I will be probably doing one about the Ace family pretty soon if you haven't heard everything about that. I won't really talk too in-depthly about that because nothing like concrete has come out about anything yet. So I'm not going to speak on it unless the facts are released. And I am so glad to finally see that Catherine is choosing her and her kids. That's all I'll say on that. But once again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video. And as always, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.